Hey guys, how's it going? Jay once again with another video. And in this video, I wanted to do something really special. It's gonna be a quick video, but I think it's really important. We all love Linux. I mean, that's probably why you're tuning into my channel. That's certainly why I created it. It's the software I'm the most passionate about. It's a big hobby for me. But it's not quite clear how to give back. How do you give back to the Linux community that's giving so much to us? How can you make a difference if you're not a developer or a coder? What can you actually do? And you know, there's all these common answers that people will give where they say file bugs. And yeah, that's valid, I'll get to that. But there's some things that a lot of people don't think about. And I wanted to make this video to give you guys some easy ways that you can give back to the Linux community. So let's jump right into it. So let's say, for example, you are either a beginner or you are just a user that doesn't have development experience because it's pretty obvious to say, you know, you can give back by writing some code and implementing a new feature. And sure, if you know how to do that, you should. It's fun. You should try that. It's awesome. But not all of us can do that. Not all of us are developers and not all of us can give back in that way. Now, one way I'm gonna tell you that you can give back is pretty obvious, but um, it's not the most important uh, of the ways that I'm going to bring up, or at least not the most approachable, because it's easy for me to say, donate money, right? Um, it helps, it really does, because these distributions, they, um, you know, their, their hosting bills are gonna be enormous. I mean, these ISO files that people download are not small. It's a massive amount of bandwidth. A lot of people don't realize it, but it's really expensive. Even some of my own bandwidth can be expensive. And I'm not even making downloads available of full ISO images. And I, it's so much more expensive for these, um, you know, these projects. So the way I look at it, if you have a few dollars to donate, you should do that, especially if you're a company and you're using Linux or open source software and it's saving you money and licensing fees that you don't have to pay, maybe some of that money can be contributed back to the project. But I don't wanna to spend too much time on that part because that's not even my favorite way of giving back. There's a few ways of giving back that most people don't even think about and it's extremely easy to do. Now the number one way I think people can give back, if the majority of my viewers or, and or the majority of the Linux community itself did this one thing, it would actually massively give back to um, Linux in general and our favorite distributions. And that's simply not to download direct, to use torrent, that's it. Just, I know not everybody can use torrents because maybe your company blocked it because someone's downloading movies at some point or something like that. Maybe your ISP even blocks it. I understand it's not something everybody can do, but if you don't have a block on Torrent, it's super easy to just use Torrent to download your ISO images. Now, here's why this helps. It helps you because it's less of a chance of you getting a corrupt download because, you know, let's face it, Torrents are going to make sure that the checksums match and that you get a ISO file that's exact. If any bits get flipped in a direct download and you go ahead and create a bootable flash drive or DVD or whatever it is you do, you might actually not be able to install it because there's corruption. Less likely to happen with Torrent. It could still happen, especially if you have bad RAM. A lot less likely, so you benefit. Now that doesn't benefit the Linux community, but what does is it's not using their bandwidth. Now, sometimes it's using some of their bandwidth if they themselves are seeding it, but it's gonna use a lot less bandwidth if people are downloading via torrent rather than directly downloading it off their site. If the majority of people downloaded over torrent, it would be a massive um, savings. So it's not like you're donating money, but you kind of are because you're helping save them money, which means that their hosting bills go down. And that leads directly into my second way that you can give back and it's still torrent related. So, you know, download is done, you're ready to, you know, create that bootable flash drive and get started. So what can you do at this point? Leave it running, leave it seeding. Not everybody can do this because, you know, maybe you have a metered internet connection or you have a bandwidth cap or you'll get penalized if you use too much data. 
But if you don't have a penalty for using too much data or a limit, why don't you just leave the download seeding for an hour? That helps your um, you know, friends and you know, that helps the community, people that you don't even know, people around the world. It's donating bandwidth back that is then used for them to download that uh, distribution. And if everybody kept it going for at least an hour after they seeded or after they downloaded that, if they seeded it for an hour, um, that's an hour of additional bandwidth usage. And if everybody did that, that really adds up. Uh, I mean, think about it. Um, already, just by using torrents, you're saving them money, but then also by seeding it, you're saving them even more money. So that's a quick way you can give back. It doesn't even cost you a dime. You don't even have to donate because donating is a great way to give back, but not everybody has the extra money. Let's face it, money's tight. I get it. Um, it's tight for a lot of people, but this is one way that you can give back that actually um, is super easy and everybody can do it. You don't even need to be a developer to just use torrents and uh, seed them for some time. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers, and their Cloud Manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. Now, another thing that you can do as well is volunteer in, your, in the forums and you don't even have to spend a lot of time there. I mean, we've all done it. I do it all the time where I have an issue, something's not working right, so what do I do? I go on Google, I try to find some information as far as, okay, what's going on and how do I fix it? I find the way to fix it, I implement the fix and everything's fine. But what I could do instead, and I do sometimes, and I think you could try to do as well, that really goes a long way is if somebody answers your question in a forum and they help you, then what I would do is look on that same forum for at least one other post that is at your experience level that you can answer and help that person. So for every one person that helps you, you then help another person in that same forum. So it's even at that point. Someone uh, spent some time to help you, now you're spending some time to help them. So you don't have to actually dedicate, you know, I'm gonna spend an hour a week in the forum. No, you, you can only do it that one time if you want. You could just do a one-to-one. -one. Someone helps me, I help someone else. And if you're feeling really generous, you could do a one to two or a one to three. So one person helps me, I help three people and answer three different topics in that same forum. Because maybe even if you're a beginner, maybe someone else is a beginner too and they're asking a question you know the answer to. And if they do, then you're giving back right then and there. And if everybody did this, then basically almost all these Linux communities would have a faster response rate for people getting help. And then that in turn helps the entire community because that gets more people on board Linux and um, helps them get their issues resolved. Now there's lots of ways that people can give back. Like I mentioned before, if you're a coder or developer, you can do that. And it's cliche to, manage, you know, to mention um, to report bugs. Yeah, you can do that and you don't need um, experience with Linux to um, you know, submit bugs. But you know, I could tell you from experience, it's very rare that when you have a problem and you go to report it, that it's not already an existing bug. So while I still encourage you to file bugs anytime that you find a problem, um, most of the time you're gonna find that someone else has already done that. It's very rare that I find an issue and I go to report it that I don't already find an existing bug report. It, it's like probably for every 20 problems I find, only one of them didn't exist in a bug. So it's really hard to volunteer that way because everybody else is already. So you should still try to do that. Maybe you'll be the first person to uh, mention that. But I think that by answering a post in the community for every post of yours that gets answered, seeding your torrent longer and always downloading via torrents whenever possible, those things actually give back and they're super easy to do that it takes no effort or knowledge at all whatsoever. So 
Those are some of the ways that you can give back. And of course, there's many more ways than that that I can't possibly cover in one video. But I wanna make sure I give you guys some easy ways that you can contribute back to the Linux community. And I've done that. So what are your thoughts? Do you have any other um, clever hacks for giving back to the community? Maybe something that's super easy to do that more people should do more often? Let me know in the comments down below. And I look forward to reading your comments and seeing what ways you've come up with for giving back. So thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.